The new Sabre winch is out, has been for a couple of months now, and I wouldn't be doing my due diligence as a <laughs> YouTube uh, workshop owner if I didn't try the thing out myself. So here it is. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna chuck this on my car with a couple of other little mods I'm planning on doing, and um, then we'll get out and test what this new Sabre winch is all about, and is as good as what they say. And there it is, through the magic of YouTube, the front bar is off my Y62. I've got another one that I'm gonna put on, which is uh, a new type we're gonna experiment with, so you have to keep watching to get to that part. But I'll show you this Sabre winch that I'm looking at. I've just pulled it all out the box and just gonna have a bit of a quick squeeze. Um, so, you know, <laughs> me having a look at it here, um, looks like a winch, what do you know? So, it actually feels pretty good. It's got a bit of weight to it. Um, I guess it's probably similar weight to like the other ones that we've got that I've used before. I'm gonna go for the um, 12,000 um, pound. If you speak to the rep, he says, talks about this automatic dual cone brake. Well, that just basically means the brake, instead of being like inside the drum here, um, it's on the outside. Uh, and the reason for that is that it's supposed to be like a better braking system. Like this, there's some winches which are built for pulling, which makes sense, but there's other winches that are built like this one for lifting. So if you're winching yourself like up a hill and the, the thing's lifting, the brake, this type of external brake, um, well, if you listen to Sabre, it's supposed to be better and not slipping and doing all that sort of thing. But it also gets it out of the, the drum of the winch, which I believe gives you more rope on the spool too. So now there's 28 meters, which is one of the longer sort of straight off the, uh, straight out of the box offerings that I've seen. The other stuff I, I guess, like and dislike here, um, remote looks good, wireless remote. I hate the ones that are wireless remote that you have to plug in, so you don't with that. That's the actual wired remote. I don't ever remember using a wired remote, so I'm not that worried about it. Uh, the Fairlead, I must admit, I'm not over the moon with that. I'm not keen on like the chromey silver look. And I'm, I wanna move away from winch hooks. I think this is just another weighty projectile. Um, there's better offerings on the market that are lighter. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, all the bolts and pieces, winch solenoid. We're not gonna know about this until they've been on the market for a while. Um, that's a thing with winch manufacturers. Uh, basically, they need to go through at least a year of torture testing before if you know they're as good as what everyone says they are. Um, but th there is a three year electrical warranty, which I think is pretty good, and a, a limited lifetime mechanical warranty. So, like, they're, they're backing their product. All the cables, the cables actually look longer to be honest, so I guess that gives me the opportunity to not necessarily have to put the winch solenoid like directly on top of the winch, I might be able to relocate it somewhere else. We'll just see what's convenient I guess. Um, right, let me show you what other ideas I have for the, the winch hook. Walking into the, the showroom now, up to the save a bit. So, I, it's like recovery gear, you know, anything metal in a recovery uh, is out. You just don't do that anymore. Don't worry about D-shackles. Um, I don't even like using like the, the steel um, uh, recovery hitches at the back. I think really they should be um, all these aluminium ones or uh, even just put the recovery strap straight into the, um, the toe hitch. Um, but when we're talking about um, the winch hooks, now there's other offerings out there. I call this the dummy. <laughs> so this is um, a new Sabre winch thimble. Uh, it's, I don't know, half a kilo, if that. Uh, it's much lighter than all the other hooks and all the other bits and pieces that you've seen. It's gonna sit flat up against it. Um, you have to splice it on. So if I show you the back of it, it's got a rubber backing. So it's gonna clip in nice to the, um, uh, to the fair lead but you've got to run the winch rope through that and then splice it. So if you don't know how to splice it, we might get Steve to do a caveat on a minute and he can show us how to do that. But in a recovery situation, we've got to get the heavy things out of it. I think these or other items like that is the way to go. So I'll be doing that on mine. And I'll show you what I want to do for the winch fairly too. Here we go. We've been playing around with these um, uh, fair leads for a while now. Um, I must admit, 
the, the one where I think we're going to go forward with will be the black um, with a red symbol um, stuck to the side of it like that. I reckon that's going to be our colour combo. And if we end up going, you know, hard with these sabre winches, we'll just put them in every pack because um, I'm a big believer in it. I'm over on the 4x4 DNA side hunting around for, I know we've got like a red winch symbol to go on, which will look excellent on the black fair lead. And I know it's in here somewhere and I just walked past a car and realized it's already been fitted to a car. So Dominic, uh, you got very lucky on this one. You're sporting the first uh, Sabre winch symbol. Check it out. And that's what it's gonna look like. That's awesome. The bar's not bad either. <laughs> In fact, the whole car's not bad. But this is the way we've done it in this car. Um, so we just put the solenoid directly on top. Bit of other little electrical stuff going on here with Victron, DCS, a next level bracket there. But that's not what we're here for. How cool is this car? Anyway. It looks like I'm gonna have to go and order myself another red one. So be it. <laughs> All right, well, I better get into it. I'm gonna clean up all the face here, um, paint that again so we're not gonna see any rust on there, and um, start putting this new bar on with the new Sabre winch. Here's a sneak peek what's going on. This is the, the bar, fair lead. And um, we're up to mounting the winch. Now, where this is, is actually in a really good position, um, the clutch here. So I don't actually need to move it anywhere. Um, but if I chose to, you can pull this apart and clock it around on the 30 degree increments. Um, that'll be fine. This is what I was talking about, the cables being probably a bit longer than normal. Um, so traditionally we'd put the solenoid box like directly on top here. But I'm thinking, if I put it up there, um, that would be much more accessible. I know it's in front of the intercooler and everything. Um, I might be able to run it around. or to have a play with that but i've never ever needed to use the the wide remote ever on a on a winch but one day if i ever do it would be much easier to use there than on top so i'm not saying this is going to be gold standard but i'm going to have a crack because i've got a bit of time all right after fitting a few of these winches now um i'm starting to appreciate some of the little nuances the saber uh, people have done for the fitters. I'll show you what I mean. So usually before you bolt the winch down, you go, ah, I've got to do all the cables first. And inevitably they're all underneath here. So if you bolt the winch down, you can't get to them to bolt all this down. Well, the lovely people of Sabre have put them all on the top for this one. So not only is the cable length a bit longer than normal, it's on top, so that saves you another 15 centimeters, which means, yeah, I can relocate the solenoid up here and because this is an intercooler or oh, a few dead bugs in it um, for the supercharger I can try and keep it all you know out the way of the intercooler as much as possible and there's just a little bit of cable there so as far as cooling hindrances yes there's cable but I think there's less you know airflow problems with it being up here than down here um, it means on a series 5 uh, the panels are going to have to be removed or if you've got a series one to four you're probably going to have to cut out that top panel that's in there but um, never know might be onto something here a few other nice patrols in here today all right this is the bar still gonna put the grill and stuff on and finish it off but yeah it's a hoop bar i said i'd never do it but here we are so we've done a few revisions here um We've gone back to putting a number plate bracket down here. So many people have asked me for these number plate brackets from the first editions and we might have an offering there. Um, also, if you can see under here, a lot of people said it was hard to, well, there's always been a hole underneath, if you can see that, to get to the winch. Um, and a lot of people have said that's like hard to get to the, um, uh, the winch tap. So now I can get to it really easily because my hand fits up through that hole doing awful camera work there but uh, hopefully you can appreciate that all right it's time to knock this out the park can't wait to put the the grill i'd love to do the chrome delete on the grill um and get the the laser lamps inside that hoop this is going to be a really cool new look i reckon 
in the final throes of wiring up this winch now and uh, don't do what Dave did. Let me show you. So I'm up to the bit where I connect it to the battery. Um, positive, no worries. Earth, I wanted to feed that around the back here. And of course, last time I was playing with my car, I don't know, the cover that goes over here, I, I don't know what to do with it. But these fuses start the car and if they blow, this car doesn't start anymore. And guess what I did? I touched just that little tip there and it's blown that 80 amp fuse, whether you can see that in there. Don't know if you can see it. But now, not that I've tried to start the car, but I'm pretty sure it won't start. Uh, I'm in trouble. Uh, luckily, <laughs> up here, <laughs> um, we carry genuine Nissan parts and I just looked up, we've got two stock on hand. So I will drive away today but it is a lesson, because imagine if this happened when I was at home on a Sunday or out in the bush or just another workshop, to be honest, and someone, you know, accidentally touched it. Like, the car's stuffed. It's not an over-the-counter fuse. So um, uh, I'm going to add that um, fuse holder brackets, 80-something bucks, uh, to our um, dash uh, in case of emergency kit um, with all the other bits and pieces you want to take on your big travels. Because, uh, yeah... I thought I'd never need one. Turns out I do, and that's why I ordered it. So there it is. If you want to order it from Nissan, you can, but if you love me, order it off our website, um, and that's what it looks like. So I'm going to keep a spare one of these in my little kit now. Wish it came with a cover. All right, for this next part of the winch install, we've gone into the field where at Bendelby Ranges, and we're going to put that uh, the winch thimble dummy on. And because I don't know how to do it, and <laughs> we didn't have time at the workshop, Steve's going to do it with a, a drink at his hand. Rope on the ground there. All right, what are we going to do with this uh, rope here to splice it, Steve? Oh, it's easy. It's like splicing a thimble is something that I think is a lot neater, um, and when it's on the car, it's a lot lighter, less dangerous. Um, but doing the job can you be a little bit daunting when you've got something that looks like this and you think how does that work but um, take the rope right off the uh, winch um, because you need to be able to intertwine it and then send it back uh, the way it knots up and as you can see it goes up inside uh, which is where it's a bit fatter there it's very thin here and it's fat from there on so it goes up inside which is where its strength is but uh, that's the bit that I'm going to show you right now so we'll get it pulled apart so the first time I, um, you know, got shown how to do this was actually really good. He, he sort of um, put me through a step-by-step -step process, but he, he pulled this apart to a degree where it left like a, a diagram for me to copy. And uh, and I'm going to do that exactly that way again, because I think that's the best way for everyone to do it. Because if you start pulling this all apart and then you forget how it was, I think you can really make a mess and make a shamble of it. So if we can get this right, this will be great. All right, let's do it. The, the tidier you pull it, it's ridiculous. It just gets that tidy. You can't move that piece inside. Figures how it works so well. But if you were just to pucker it up, bring it down so it goes wider again. Uh, not sure, but you might be able to see that little bit of rope inside yeah, there. Yeah. So that's what you want to get loose so you can pull it back through. Having to have that as loose as you possibly can. Yeah, it should be, that should be pulling out though. It should be. Let's go same. Alright, so that was a bit more of a challenge because I was trying to separate that um, to pull it through, but I was just gripping one of these extras and that was pulling it together, so it made it hard for myself. But we got the old uh, pointies out and we managed to um, get out of there a little bit easier. So, all you professionals, you can laugh at me, that's all good. Um, <laughs> Alright, so. Slowly pulling that through gives you an idea now that the reason for us taking it off the, the actual winch spool was to indicate now that it goes around the loop, mm -hmm. it comes back over and it pierces through, and then as it pierces through and comes around to be tucked in, that's the bit that we need, but you can't do that with it, uh, you know, left on the winch. Yeah. You just possibly can't. You can't do it. So it's got to come off so you can feed it back through pull it through and then you make your opening so that just to get pulls your tail out through yeah so this here will now just pull through Look at that. and that, that comes out 
Look this is good to show this bit because you can see what's so yeah. basically loop through itself and then that bit gets like stuck down the center of the rope so this piece here that's coming from the from the actual winch barrel itself you can see goes through does a, the s-bend comes back around but what we have to do is obviously pull that to, through the first notch which is made out of the end of the tail to go through there so it goes in and around and then goes back up through the tail that gets pinched when it's pulled all right looks so good that's the that's the little cheat diagram i'll cut it back up here so then i can start a nice fresh one gotcha all right still <laughs> <laughs> I thought they're cutting winch rope. Ready? One, two, three. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I tried doing that with a pair of side cutters one day and uh, kind of embarrassed myself. I just about broke my wrist. Doesn't work. So you probably best to use a good blade. Right. Now this bit uh, here obviously can get real feathered up um, in, in regards of like feeding it through your thimble, comes back around, and then you start feeding it through your little you know, diagram, your cheat diagram here, and it can start to get a little bit feathered up here which then begins to be a big problem when you try and feed it up to make that length up here. And when you've got something that's trying to, you know, bend 90 degrees backwards on itself, it's near impossible. It's like, you know, when you pull your tassel through and you get it stuck halfway around, you end up giving it to your wife to do because you give up. <laughs> that's pretty much what happens. So I just get a lighter, it's a bit of the old fishing trick, I guess and um, i just give it a bit of heat and just make sure it's all nice and strong like goes like a uh, plastic on the top of it might work it's a bit windy here what are you doing steve <laughs> <laughs> i was just looking down there you can see the uh it's gone a little bit plasticky but it's helped join it together it's only a little bit but it's enough just to uh help me out and i'll put a little bit of electrical tape for this one for good luck wrap it tight only right at the end now, someone say you shouldn't do that, it's rubbish. Well, I feel this was a lot easier for me to get this up in through the guts later. So we'll explain that once we get there. All right, uh, Davo, you want to put your dummy on your car now? Let's do it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it doesn't look right. Anyway, here we go. So put one end through. Obviously you want to have a fair bit to um, come through just due to the fact that you got to tuck it up there feed it up through the guts and now I just grab a screwdriver flathead screwdriver and we want to copy what's going on in this one here so if I was to put it that way it makes more sense we're coming down we're going through and then I've got to then poke that back up through this section Right. We've got to that stage where we've um, gone through the centre of that and it's, uh, you know, as, as neat as possible. What we need to do is uh, make another centimetre higher or as close as you can, but obviously go, going through a little bit of a nut, a little bit of a, um, a crisscross there because you want it to be able to stab into it. But you don't want to go too high because it will look untidy. So go close, just make another section where you can run it through. But this is where the whole complete winch rope has got to be fed through and it makes it a nice tight knot so if i go get it go get the end hopefully we haven't knotted it up on the ground didn't think of that but, uh, <laughs> all right so that's obviously the end that went on our winch um and was bolted in by the allen key or whatever's there on the particular brand you've got and we want to poke it through that uh, oh, little yeah. incision that we got. Just trying not to damage it. All right, so now this is where we get to the point where it turns into the knot, the strong part. Uh, Toby, oh. can I get you to pull that through? You can. Go for a bit of a whoop. Go for a bit of a wander. How strong are you going to run? Hang on. So, obviously, uh, there's your little protective stuff that goes over the winch cable. And that wind is going to be over the winch cable. It's still here. Look at that. Maybe you can just take it off. Go straight. 
Ghostrider. Ghost Rider over here. Oh no. All right, the wind's dropped off again. So I've left the uh, the sock over the winch cable to give you an indication that was the end there. It went back through and it goes back to the winch there. So now we get that, so we pull it tight. We've got that pretty close, nice and even, and that's our end. So that end there is now gonna be fed through this winch cable air in the guts all the way up to that point. So now is where we need to make it all nice and loose, all the way up to the, the length of that tail, so that we can feed this back up through the guts of that have it finish at the top there so it's had something nice and strong to hang on to. What I've done is I just jumped the gun a little bit because it's a little bit windy here and I've just puckered up all this so we get a nice little tunnel that goes up through the guts here and now we can make a nice little incision mark where we're going to feed it up through that's going to be nice and neat but we've got to make sure that we keep it nice and loose don't hold it tight don't try and pull it because you're going to make it all all the stitching is going to start gripping up in places you don't want it to just yet so now i'll feed that up through and it's just a matter of keeping this hand on it lightly without trying to strangle it and feeding this line or the tail through uh, it's a bit like your jacket when you have your um, tassel that uh, goes up through the washing and then you find out that it's halfway up here and you've got to try and feed it through. It's the same thing. you just got to try and <laughs> grip it uh, and pull it through just like so. So grip it up, pull it through. Just keep doing that until you can get it as high as you possibly can, nice and tight and straight to give you the best result you can possibly ask for. This is actually working a lot easier than normal just due to the fact that I've given it plenty of um, looseness inside, given it that nice little tunnel. And by putting that little bit of electrical tape and burning the top of it to make it hard, you don't get any uh, anything that collects up in there and catches and just works. So I'm starting to get the idea that everything's all coming nice wove back together. Um, don't know where I did with the old one, with the old one. So the old one gives you the same indication now that I've had that to copy. You really can't go wrong if you copy it. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much at the stage now where I'm happy with it all in there. It's all nice and firm. Now is where you want to pinch it. So we've got it all nice and straight in there. Pretty much. Just lock it on. Right. Pretty much new just one. set it. There you go, Davo. You got your dummy back. That looks like it came from factory like that. Looks good. Yeah. So we'll obviously we'll just make sure we get it back on the car. We'll set it against the tree. We'll set the uh, set the winch and make sure it doesn't pull out any further. And double check our own work before we start double pulling up some sort of stupid hill. <laughs> and I know just the one to test it out on tomorrow. Look, I'm, dummy now. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna press the button. <laughs> nice. Look at that. Sweet. Oh, you forgot your number plate, you twat. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, I don't want to show my number plate anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> no one knows who I am. Use this W of yours. <laughs> Alright. Alright. I'd like to keep the cover gear on the EMU wings so I can get to my sabre gear like that. Goody, need one of them. That'll do. Alright, let's go. Sort this thing up. So with the sabre winch remote, just press and hold that for I don't know three seconds and then you should be able to start winching out. Through the hole of the dummy. Get the D 
dampener on there. They say about a third, but I never remember which third it's supposed to be on. All right, let's jump in the car. Okay, we're getting to the end of the video and I want to start putting little disclosure statements at the end of each one of my videos where I talk about products. Uh, I bought my Sabre winch uh, from Sabre at a trade price because we sell Sabre winches. Um, so if you like this video and um, you want to get yourself some Sabre gear or winches, come to dashoffroad.com.au and I'll see you on YouTube. Yeah, yeah.